good morning. How are we all? Welcome back to my channel and to <laughs> what's well, probably going to be quite a snotty vlog. Sorry, I already need to blow up my nose. I'm not very well. <laughs> I've just made myself a honey lemon and uh, ginger tea with black pepper. I've lost count of how many of these I've had over the past like three days. How are we all doing? I was reading some of your comments recently um, in a vlog that went live before this and you are all so, so lovely. And um, my heart goes out to so many of you because I know you're all going through your own things in life and you write such lovely comments and it's so nice to see other people who watch these videos reply to those people as well and it's just, I feel like we've built such a beautiful community in the comments and it just, it makes my heart sing. I'm sending love to you all. I hope anyone who's out there is not very well is on the mend soon. Back to a full recovery. There's certainly something circulating around in London. So many of my friends and people I know aren't very well at the minute. So I think it's like end of season, beginning of change of weather cold, whatever. I don't get sick very often, which is so, so lucky. Um, but when I do get sick, I, it hits me, like floors me. <laughs> Apologies about the way I look. However, I've been in the house now for like three days, resting up, reading and I'm just starting to go a bit do lally So I thought I'd pick up the camera and sneeze on YouTube. <laughs> I hope you all don't mind. I'm actually gonna turn this into a productive day while well, try to. Taking things slowly, but as you can tell by the title, I'm really trying to keep on top of the flat because uh, obviously we had a really harsh winter here in England. It was very, very cold and obviously this flat. I don't know if I've said this, but we had our windows fixed. We had a contractor come around and he fixed all of the windows um, and he said that there aren't any thermal breaks in the windows which means they they just don't keep the heat in which we've always known if you pop your hands near our windows you feel a breeze and they're so cold um, and obviously we have really big windows at this flat and a lot of them so it's a really big space to keep warm definitely something to consider when we move about um, the condition of the windows and a cost we'd have to factor in. I am going to come on to move in, in this video as well, um, just as a little update. But I'm going to um, I'm going to head into Zara's bedroom and try and tackle quite a big issue in there. To be fair, she's had mold kind of grow, which is so bad. But obviously, throughout the winter, it seemed pointless to try and clean it and combat it because it was just growing back. Now that the weather is getting warmer, um, I'm going to try and tackle that. Obviously, I'm not very well, but. I'm going to pop a mask on and just spray it with some mould um, cleaner, fully wipe it after about an hour or so, then paint over it. Um, and I know that's just a temporary fix, but hopefully we won't be in this flat much longer. We have told the landlord he's aware of it. Whether or not they'll do anything about it is a different story. So I'm going to show you it. It's bad. Also, the window ledge is completely like cracked as well. Um, and like all of the damp's gone in that too, but it's fully dried out. We've got the dehumidifier in there as well. So yeah, it's not going to be a, it's not going to be the most exciting vlog, but what else do you do when you're sick? <sighs> Can't say I'm looking forward to it, but you know, <laughs> we'll just carry on. Mags has been so good as well. I swear dogs and cats know when you're not very well, because look, she's just putting her paw on me. And she just doesn't leave my side. Thank you, lovely. You're a very good dog. So this is what we're dealing with. The wood has started to, oh gosh, you can see it's like chipping away here. Um, so I'm gonna need to sand that down and then fill it. Um, yeah, they're just it's just not good. Obviously where the water's got in and it's just started to crack, which is not fab. And then this is the current situation of the top. In the Corvin, um, again, really, really not good. I'm super concerned for Zara because obviously when she's sleeping in here on an evening, like breathing that in is not good. So um, I'm gonna scrape all of that paint off as well, pop the dehumidifier on again, and then um, get basically wiping it and um, painting over it, which is not gonna be fun, but it has to be done. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> this is a bigger job than I thought. This is what I've done so far. So when we first moved in, these were the color of the walls. Um, they were like a magnolia. And as you can see, the, the paint just like rubs off. And obviously I've scraped all this back and kind of just taken what I can off without going down to like the brick. So it's dry, it's dry, which is good. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's not fab. So I'm gonna spray this with the mold and mildew spray, give it a scrub, obviously with my mask on, and then, um, yeah, clean and paint. This Astonish mold and mildew blaster is fantastic. It's quite bleachy, so I've opened the windows. Yeah, it's working wonders. I'm just having to take regular breaks just so I don't breathe it in too much. I'm taking a five minute break. 
since moving into this flat, landlord rules have changed, and I've only just recently found out about this, but basically, as a tenant, you can evoke your right to break your lease and move without notice. I think this is correct if your flat is deemed unhabitable, which things like mold, poor insulation, heat and issues, that kind of thing, if your landlord doesn't rectify them, you are entitled to move without any break clause, fees, etc. The only issue being <laughs> is that we're in this like halfway phase between being so close to buying and the rental market being so horrendous that if we were to move, we wouldn't get something like this. And I've spoke about this before for the price, so we're just like sticking it out. But obviously, sleeping in a multi bedroom is not great. Anyway, I had some of this leftover mold repellent paint that Ewan actually gave me but I think it might have separated I could be wrong I'm gonna have a look and see this is one of those jobs I'm kind of regretting starting but it needed doing okay this is looking promising so I'm using some of this um ready to use instant filler just to fill in where the wood is completely split um ideally we'd use wood filler but we're all out so this is all we have Yeah, so I've just got some of the Good Home Brilliant White Paint just out of the cupboard. I'm giving it a quick stir and I'm just going to cover up some of where Zara's got some makeup on the wall. I mean, it happens, but I don't know how she does this. She's a little Picasso. <laughs> that is looking much better. Like I said, it will be painting the top of this tomorrow, but for now, I'm very happy with the progress. What time are we on? We've just gone midday. That didn't take too long, actually. It's one of those jobs you start and you think, why did I start this? And then I'm glad I did it. So yeah, halfway there. But whilst we're on the topic of renting and houses and all that stuff, I thought this would be a good chance to talk about like the year. Obviously it's April now, so we're in the fourth month of this year, which is still, I just don't know how time goes so quick. And if one thing I learned last year is about like the pressure I put on myself and stick into like time frames and plans, nothing ever goes to plan. <laughs> I've spoke about this, but Zara and I have been having a chat about like the timeline for this year and realistic expectations about where we're going to be and that kind of thing. And then we are having to wait until after summer and um, I won't go into too much detail about it, but it's basically to do with me and like my employment online so when you are a creator obviously you work for yourself so all of your like invoicing and stuff has to be done and registered with the government and that kind of thing it's very long and boring I registered as a company so it's just like I kind of need to pass the annual one year threshold end of accounts so that I have enough proof that I've earned what I have. So yeah, I, I, I mean, it's long, it's boring, it's just putting all of your finances where they need to be, essentially. But uh, yeah, when that's done, hopefully, fingers crossed, by summer, so July, we will be able to apply for what's called a mortgage in principle, which essentially is just where you go to lenders, and I mean, lenders at the moment will be lucky if we find a good one because the interest rates are ridiculous, but it is what it is. Hopefully they will come down. So yeah, we'll just go to lenders and say, this is how much we've saved up, this is how much we earn, how much can we borrow? And then the mad fun starts where we start looking at houses. So yeah, that's gonna be kind of like around summertime. So we're gonna be like July, August, September is when we're gonna apply for that. Hopefully, fingers crossed then, we'll start viewing houses and we might be in by the end of the year. I'm hoping we'll be in by the end of the year, but obviously it depends if we go for a house that's in a chain. If it is in a chain, things get more complicated. So we are hoping and praying that it goes smoothly, but let's be honest, it's us, it won't. <laughs> but um, I'm, I, do you know what? I, I feel like all of my apprehension and nerves are still there, but they're kind of just subsided with like excitement. I am both excited, but also remembering and keeping in mind that if it doesn't happen this year, for whatever reason, if there's technicalities, if there's things to do with legal paperwork, anything, that's fine also. We're just gonna continue doing what we're doing, continuing saving, enjoying our life, living here, it's all fine. So yeah, I just thought I'd give you guys an update the timeline wise. I mean, July is literally in four months. Four months is crazy. It's blowing my tiny mind. <laughs> Maggie's just looking out the window, <laughs> as she always does. <laughs> she's such a good girl. I feel like she's really came into her own recently. 
There's a golden retriever who lives just down the road called Ralph and she is obsessed with them and every day this week we've bumped into the owner. Completely accidentally we walk at different times but they seem to be walking at the same time we are and Maggie's obsessed with golden retrievers like she loves them so um yeah <laughs> I feel like it's a sign. Also I know I mentioned in a previous vlog about changing out this artwork we've kept these frames here just to see if we like the scale and we're really really happy with it so I'll leave on screen the two prints that we've gone for. They've actually been dispatched so Hopefully they um they won't be too long away, but yeah, we're gonna pop them in here. And I just feel like it'd be a really nice like pop of colour, a nice little modern contemporary contrast with like the traditional elements. And then also just as a nice little touch to spring, I got this candle out. This is a triple wick burner from a brand called Charles Farris. This was very kind of centrist last year. Um, and we just haven't burnt it yet because it's just so stunning and we were going to save it for when we moved But I just said to Zara, let's just have it in here and we can light it Obviously it gets warm super soon so we can just enjoy it But it's like a lovely patchouli Charles Farris London 1845 Fab fab candle brand slightly premium, but lovely lovely scent and then last but not least I'll leave a photo on screen of the lampshade that I've ordered off of Etsy now I know this was a new edition from William Morris Morris & Co. We love it and this black lamp was was a recent purchase from HomeSense, so we're not going to get rid of it, absolutely not. I'm just going to pop it in the cupboard because it's a fab little lampshade. I think it was like six pounds. But the one we've ordered is off of Etsy and it's like a nice bold stripe. We're just loving playing around with colour at the minute and textures and just adding a bit of fun back in. And I think it will just look really, really nice. And maybe a new piece of art here too, like a slightly smaller one. But yeah, really looking forward to all those pieces arriving and all tying in together. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know, like Zara and I, our tastes have changed so much and mine traditionally was always airing on the side of tradition and I think that's never going to go away. We love traditional, we love antiques, we love like real pieces that have history but I think we're really enjoying that like modern twist as well so old meets new. I think that blend is always so lovely. It's exciting like we are just excited which is a nice feeling. I'm just whipping up some lunch. We had one rogue potato so I've just boiled it. I'm gonna add some chives and a little bit of blue cheese and make like a nice mash with some milk. And then we had three random veggie sausages left in the fridge, so I've just air fried those. And then we've got some gravy left over in the microwave, so I'm having sausage and mash. Lunch was delicious. Speaking of moving and neighbours, um, I dropped some little Easter goodies next door for our neighbours. We love them so much, so, so friendly. Best neighbours we've ever had. They are, I think they're from Spain, aren't Malta? And their parents have came to visit for Easter and they dropped us off these. I've already had two, but I thought I'd show them. These are figoli, which I've never had before, but um, apparently they're a traditional um, Maltese bake that you'd eat and enjoy around the Easter time. And you can decorate them, but they're kind of like, they've got like a texture of a scone, but then they have like a gorgeous filling. Let me show you. It's like an almond paste, almost like a frangipan in the middle. They are so, so, so good. I'm, I, I just, I don't want them to end. <laughs> I knocked on their door and said they were delicious. I need the recipe because they are, oh, so good. I think like an orange zest through them. Mm, delicious. Anyway, I'm gonna make myself a little coffee and continue reading my book because I'm really enjoying it. Oh, oh hi. hi. Hello. Snacks. So I've been meaning to do this for months actually. I've just never really gotten around to it and Seeing as I'm having a bit of a DIY day, I thought it would be a good day to do it, so. I got these old brass style knobs at a car boot market. Um, I think it was actually the one I went with you in last year. And um, yeah, there's 10 of them. And then I got these in Tetbury, which is in the Cotswolds. They're like antique marble style knobs. So I've got five of those and 10 of those. And I'm gonna swap out the knobs on this chest of drawers. Now I got these from Facebook Marketplace and I'm not keen on the color. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I think the color is just a little bit, it's a bit too warm, a bit too piney and red. So I will be sanding this, not today, but um, I will definitely do it and give it like a, maybe like a darker stain to be fair. But I'm gonna take all of my clothes out of the drawers and then pop the new knobs on. I just need to see if I've got some bolts because I need to be able to bolt them on. These will be fine, but it's these ones that don't have a bolt. Mm -hmm. 
There we are. So that's the first knob on there. I really, really like them. I think this little aged bronze like brass at the front is so nice. Obviously, I think darker wood would definitely be nicer, but really happy with that. Okay, I am so nearly done. The annoying thing is I ran out of little, like, I think they're called nuts or ball to go on the end. I need three more. I have one on this one, but I need three more, which is so annoying. But I've swapped over all of the other ones, and I think that looks so much better. For a little first bit marketplace find and some antique knobs. Happy days. Right, so I'm about to take Maggie out for her afternoon walk, and it is looking so grey and miserable outside, like the weather is just dirty, great big clouds. <laughs> Something tells me I'm gonna get very wet, but all the best dog walks end that way, don't they? <laughs> A far cry from the weather we had two days ago where it was beautifully sunny. This is miserable and wet. <laughs> oh, hello ducks. So I'm back from walking Maggie and I have just checked where we're at with the, um, window sills and I think we're there. It's dried perfectly so I'm just going to give this a very light sand and then we're going to paint over it. I'm going to use this Dulux quick dry eggshell in the colour Timeless. It's for wood and metal so um, yeah long lasting protection should be good to go. There we are guys they are fully painted. That looks so so much better. Honestly, the wall's been painted as well. So chuffed with that. It's not fully smooth, but with a piece of hand sandpaper, that's the best that we're gonna get. This one is so much better as well. It literally looks spotless. I've left the windows open, as you can probably hear <laughs> from the road noise, but um, yeah, this is gonna dry, and then we're good to go. So the window sills are all painted, and um, Zara is making a cheesecake for Easter. I am so excited. Today is Thursday, so it's the day before Good Friday. And then, um, well, there's a bit of a mini egg shortage, isn't there? But she's going to do mini egg chocolate orange mini eggs. Is that, is that what they're called? Yeah. Um, I think these are a global thing. Terry's chocolate orange mini eggs. Yeah, Zara's in the process of making that now, which I'm very excited about because I love cheese. It's a no-bake cheesecake, isn't it? I don't know. Right. <laughs> I don't know, Luke. You've been rather involved, so I think you can probably explain what I'm doing. No, do you know what it is? Oh, God. Multiple times. Here we bloody go. I've said about a week ago, I'm going to make a cheesecake. No. Oh, that would be really lovely. Luke lets me make the cheesecake. All I've got down to, I've just about crumbled some bloody biscuits. Oh, oh. And he's all involved. No. 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 no I'm just gonna, I'm just stop it. All I was saying is, you don't need to tip these into there, then tend to take that from there and put it in here. Honestly, you simply could just add it. You could just add it straight into this. You're bothering me. <laughs> okay, I'm leaving the kitchen. I'm leaving the kitchen and when I come back it will be trashed and there will be a lovely cheesecake I imagine. Maggie, trashed. let's go in the living room. We can no, read Maggie, together. You know Maggie stays with me. Yeah, she does because oh, it's needy feeding time, that's why. Traitor. She Traitor. If we get a cheesecake at the end of this magazine. Oh god! <laughs> I love that she's come in! <laughs> Maggie knows to get out of the kitchen. <laughs> Sounds like chaos is happening in the kitchen. Maggie, what's going on please, darling? <laughs> it's thinking that it's your head that's me off. Yeah. This is delicious. What are you doing now? <laughs> folding. Fantastic folding, well done. Ladies and gents, would you look at that? She pulled through. That actually looks really fantastic. Actually, see, it's your choice of words. <laughs> I think it looks great. I'm very impressed. I like the decoration. Gone for a chopped orange chocolate with Terry's chocolate orange eggs and some sprinkles. So Zara didn't let me film her when she was being a chef, but she's just smashed out dinner. How gorgeous does this look? It's a lovely little um, truffle and mushroom pasta with some garlic bread and a lovely bottle of rosé. Oh. Starting the weekend, this is a Coteau Bourguignon. Bourguignons? Lovely. Oh, that's a real life. It's a hard nap life. I am. Hi, Queen. So relaxed. <laughs> Right, we're cozied up for the evening and we're gonna watch this on Netflix called The Whole oh, Truth. God. It came out in 2016. Oh, it's about 
like law in America and like an attorney uncovering some disturbing facts. Which sounds right up our street. Dinner was delicious. Feeling a lot better actually, which is really quite nice. Maybe just a day of fresh air and getting Someone stuff done. Sorry, making me dinner. Like, I'll let you know how the cheesecake was in the next vlog because it's got to set for 24 hours. So in the meantime, I'm going to have some of this Waitrose carrot cake for a fudge, sorry, to kick off the Easter weekend. But I'm going to wrap this vlog up. I feel like it's been short and sweet, but it's just been nice to actually move my body and do something instead of just lying and festering. <laughs> but yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this. Lots of love to you all. Take care and I'll catch you all very soon. Bye for now.